everyone and welcome to Journey with the Kellers. My name is Amanda Keller and today we are back in the Keller kitchen. So today we are going to be making something from the official Disney Parks Celebration Cookbook, which is a new book that just came out recently. Um, so in today's recipe is chorizo empanada with spicy turmeric and anata aioli. Okay, I think I said that right. I hope. Okay. All right, so the uh, couple of things that you will need to do, at, well, you can do it as you're prepping pretty much. You are going to need um, a half a cup of shortening that is cold. So if you have the sticks, that would work. Um, I didn't have the sticks, I just had the regular shortening, so I just put it in a half a cup and I stuck it in the fridge. Um, and then you're going to cut this into cubes. Instead of cutting it into cubes, I'm just going to kind of take it out in little sections with my spatula, okay? You're also going to need one cup of ice cold water that you're gonna divide. So I just put a big thing of ice and water in a big measuring cup, and then I have my smaller measuring cup to measure it into, because you don't want the ice in the water when you put it in the recipe. You just want it to be making the water ice cold, okay? The other thing you're going to need is one egg yolk beaten, which I will beat it here when we get to that point, okay? So the first thing we're going to make is the empanada dough. So what you're going to do is in a bowl, you are going to combine uh, three cups of all-purpose flour. So we have one, two, and three. And then you're going to put in also one and a half teaspoons. It's supposed to be, of course, salt. I'm just using regular old salt. Um, so let's see. I think my dog is barking at my cat. <laughs> okay, so we got one teaspoon and a half a teaspoon. Okay, put that in there. There we go. And you're going to stir that together, okay? Once you've got that nice and stirred up, you're gonna add your half a cup of cold shortening that's been cubed. And like I said, I'm just gonna kind of take mine out in little chunks and put it all around. Works just as well, oops, as uh, cubes there. Let you fling the powder, the uh, flour everywhere. Okay. All right. There we go, maybe, there we go. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is you're gonna use your hands for this part and you're gonna go ahead and just kind of scrunch it together. I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna make sure it's covered in flour because I don't wanna get the shortening all over my hands if I can help it. But you're gonna mix it with your hands until the flour resembles like a coarse meal. So you're just gonna kind of keep rubbing it through the flour and it, then it'll kind of turn into like a coarser flour, okay? It's like, it's like squirting flour out of my fingers, whoops. I don't know why it's doing that. That's really funny though. All right, so we're just gonna keep doing this here until we feel like it's pretty much mixed in. I try to make sure there's like no large lumps of uh, shortening kind of in there, but you also wanna make sure that you get down to the bottom. So make sure you get all that flour mixed in, okay? There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. So you got kind of a coarser looking flour instead of just the really fine stuff, okay? Now, let me go wash my hands real quick. hands nice and washed off. Now is going to come the time for the beaten egg yolk. Okay. So what you're going to do is take your egg yolk, just beat it a little bit. And you are going to add this in. Okay. 
And then with this, you are gonna add in a half of a cup of your ice water. So I'm just gonna make sure the ice, whoop, and there's still a piece of ice went in there. Let's try to make sure ice doesn't go in there. There we go, that should melt pretty quickly. And then dump that in there. And you're gonna combine that together. And oops, I just noticed it said to do the egg yolk and the half a cup of water together in a separate bowl and then add it to the flour. So sorry about that. So I wanna do that instead. Okay, so technically add the beaten egg yolk and the half a cup of ice water in a separate bowl, mix them together and then add them in here. But eh, it's all right. And you're gonna stir this until you get a soft dough. Okay, so we're getting pretty much a soft dough right now. I think this part would work better with your hands too, but it seems to be, yeah, it's a pretty soft dough. Okay, there we go. All right, so now you are going to slowly add in your other half a cup of ice water. So I'm gonna pour a half a cup in here. Trying to keep the ice from going in. So we're just gonna add a little bit and mix it in. And you only need to add, um, let's see, you only need to add this extra half a cup if your dough is too dry, which mine was, it wasn't really forming a dough yet. We're just gonna add a little bit at a time until we get a dough. Which we're starting to get, it's getting there. Make sure everything in the bottom goes in. Now, if you're not getting anything in the bottom, add a little bit more water. That's better. And we got a nice little dough forming. Okay. Okay. So I'm not sure. Still feels a little bit too dry. So I think I'm going to add a little bit more water. It's just not quite doughy enough for me. that's going to be better. Just make sure that after each uh, little amount of water that you add, that you make sure that you get it mixed in real well. The dough should feel like dough, not like a, you know, a wet mess. Okay, so now what you're going to do is you're going to take this and put it on a floured surface. I'm just going to put some flour on here and you're just going to knead it like five or six times, okay? Which basically means just kind of fold it in on itself and smash it down. That's, I'm gonna call, I call it smashing it, not kneading it, but that's all right. All right, so there we go. Now you got a pretty good, looks like a pretty good dough, okay? So once you've kneaded this a couple of times, I've probably done it more than five to six times. I'm just trying to make sure it's really good and mixed up. Um, you're gonna go ahead and wrap this in plastic wrap and refrigerate it for about 30 minutes, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and clean this up and then I will come back and we'll make our next things while this is refrigerating, okay? So I'll be back in just a bit. Okay, you guys, so next we're going to make our, our spicy turmeric aioli. I can't say that today for some reason. Okay, so this calls for taking a half a cup of mayonnaise and mixing it with one and a half teaspoons of sriracha. But I have this sriracha mayonnaise that I kind of would like to use up. It was for a different recipe and now it's just kind of sitting in my fridge. So I thought, well, I'm going to use it up since this takes a sriracha mayonnaise basically too. 
So I did look and there is no turmeric in the recipe or in the bottle, at least according to the ingredients. So I've got the um, what, half a cup, I'm just doing a half a cup of sriracha mayonnaise. But if you want to mix it, you can do a half a cup of mayonnaise with one and a half teaspoons of sriracha. And then you're going to add to that a half of a teaspoon of ground turmeric. Uh, here's a half a teaspoon. Okay. There we go. And what did I just set my lid? Oh, here's. Okay. And then you're just going to stir that together. And then you can go ahead and just stick a lid on this and put it in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it, okay? So I'm gonna let that sit for a second. The other thing that we're gonna make is a natto aioli, okay? And for that, you are going to need a half a cup of mayonnaise. Uh, let's see, where is my half a cup here? It's a third of a cup, here we go. So you're gonna need a half a cup of mayonnaise for this. Put that in a bowl. And then you're gonna add a half a teaspoon of ground anata with this. So half a teaspoon right here. Now, uh, I did have to get this anata on uh, Amazon. So if you can't find it locally, you can get it on Amazon. Now you do have a choice at this point. You can add some red food coloring if you want to. I'm not gonna do it, I'm just gonna leave it out. It's already gonna be kind of pinkish anyway, so that's fine with me. Okay, there we go. So this is the Anata aioli. It's kind of like a pinkish color. Oh, and I still got some, some Anata over here on the side. So let's make sure we get that mixed in. And then this is the spicy turmeric aioli, okay? So you're gonna put lids on both of these and put them in the refrigerator until they're ready to serve. The next thing we're gonna make is the chorizo filling. For that, you are gonna need three fourths of a cup of ground chorizo. You're gonna need one cup of diced Spanish onion and one cup of diced poblano pepper, okay? And, oh, and a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Everything else should be pretty much stuff you would have in your cabinet, okay? All right, so I will be right back and we will cook up the chorizo um, and then uh, we'll put these all together and cook them and hopefully get them done quickly. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, you guys, so once you have all your onions and your peppers and all of that chopped up, what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your three-fourths of a pound of chorizo, which is about 12 ounces, and you're just gonna cook it up in a frying pan until it's done for about eight minutes, okay, which I've already done here. Then what you're going to do is you are going to add your one cup of diced Spanish onion. Now, just to let you know, um, this is not a Spanish onion. This is actually a sweet onion. I couldn't find a Spanish onion around here, okay? And then also one cup of diced poblano pepper. And you're gonna put that in. And you're gonna cook, let that cook for about eight minutes until it's soft, but not brown. I'm not really sure how you're gonna tell they're not brown because the chorizo is gonna kind of turn them brown, but that's okay. Make sure while you're cooking your chorizo that you do break it up into small pieces, okay? So once you have cooked this and gotten your onions and peppers nice and soft, you're going to go ahead and add in one tablespoon of all-purpose flour, okay? And you're just going to mix that in and you're going to cook it for another one to two minutes until it makes kind of a roux or a roux, R-O-U-X. I don't remember how they say it. Everybody says it different, okay? Once it's cooked with the flour for one to two minutes, you're just gonna add your um, 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes, okay? And you're gonna let that come to a simmer and uh, simmer it for about 10 minutes. So put it on a low heat and simmer it for 10 minutes, okay? 
Um, then if the mixture gets too thick, you can add one to two tablespoons of water to kind of loosen it up, okay? You also are going to need one and a half teaspoons of finely chopped fresh cilantro, which I have over here on my cutting board. So once it has uh, cooked for the 10 minutes and it's, you know, you added a little water or not if it needs it, then you're gonna remove it from the heat and you're gonna stir in your one and a half teaspoons of finely chopped fresh cilantro. And then you're gonna salt and pepper it to taste. So however much you want in there, okay? Then you're gonna go ahead and let it cool for 15 minutes. And then while it's cooling, I will come back and show you guys how we make the actual chorizos themselves, okay? Or the empanadas, I'm sorry. So I will be back in just a minute, little bit when it's time to make those. Okay, you guys, so now my chorizo meat is back here on the counter cooling off. So now what you're gonna do, and I forgot to, I think I forgot to tell you guys that before you put your empanada dough in the refrigerator to split it into two discs, I think I forgot that part. So you're gonna split them into, split it in half and put those into disc and then wrap those disc in plastic wrap. So, sorry. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put a little bit of flour on our work surface here and we're gonna grab our first disc. And what you're gonna do is you're just gonna roll this out to one eighth of an inch, okay? And I have these little like things that screw on to the bottom of my rolling pin or to the ends of my rolling pin. So I should know how much an eighth of an inch is. Now, remember that you're supposed to start in the middle and go out. And I flip mine around a lot so that it's basically getting rolled out from both sides. Okay. If you notice that it is like having um, troubles rolling out, like let's say it rolls out, but then it goes right back. Um, usually that means it's just been worked too much. And you need to give it a rest for a few minutes. So you can always just stop rolling it for a little bit and then really, you shouldn't have that problem at the very beginning, but just in case you do have that problem eventually, then you can go ahead, you'll know what to do. Just let it rest for a few minutes and then usually you can carry on with rolling it out, okay? And I think we've almost got this out. It's just about got it. Is it on the ground or on the table, I should say? Yep, it's starting to leave marks in the flour over here, so it should be ready. There we go. Okay, so now you're going to take a five inch cookie sheet, which are not cookie sheet, cookie cutter, a five inch round cookie cutter, which I didn't have. So I am just using, I found this, it's a top to a tin. It's actually a tin of cookie, of little small cookie cutters. And I just cleaned that off and I'm gonna use that. So you're gonna cut out five inch round pieces. Ooh, as many as you can get out. You can see that's not gonna cut very well. So I'm probably gonna have to use a knife and cut them the rest of the way. Okay. Ugh. And it says you should get five to six of these per, oh my gosh, this is really sick and I should have put flour on there, per um, dough, I guess. So I'm guessing I'm going to have to roll this out again because, yeah, mine is definitely, mine's only getting like two on there. So I'm going to go ahead and continue this. I'm going to roll, re -roll, get these out, re-roll this out, um, and then I'm going to uh, do the other piece of dough and do that one as well. And then I will come back and show you guys how to fill these, okay? So I'll be back in just Okay, a you guys, so we have gotten our little empanadas all rolled out. Now, I only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I only got eight of them out of it. So I don't, I don't know. But anyways, um, and that's fine. So the other thing that you are going to need is to take one beaten egg and add one tablespoon of water to it and just beat it together so that you have a little egg wash and then you're gonna be probably need a brush to egg wash that on, okay? So what you're gonna do is on your empanada dough here, you're gonna put about three tablespoons of your chorizo mix. Two and three, it seems like a lot to be honest with you, okay? And then you are gonna take your egg wash and you're gonna brush the mixture around the outer, the outer edge here. So just all the way around the edge. Okay, and then you're gonna seal those closed. Try to 
get it in there. Woo! Yeah, see, I think that's too much. I have to be careful with how much I put in there because that's overflowing. Okay, I would suggest maybe starting with two tablespoons instead of three, but yeah. Okay, then you're gonna use either a fork or a crimping tool if you have one and just crimp the edges together by smashing the ends of your fork tine or by using the crimping tool. I don't think I've ever used, I'm not even sure what a crimping tool looks like to be honest with you. Okay. All right, then you're gonna, you're supposed to put these on an ungreased baking sheet, but I will tell you, I am going to put mine on a uh, baking sheet with parchment paper. Okay, this is, it's made a mess all over it because it was just overflowed, okay? And then, let's see, are you supposed to, nope, it just says put them on an ungreased baking sheet she baked them at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes or until they're golden brown. Then you're going to drizzle the um, uh, turmeric aioli and the annata aioli over top of them and then serve them warm. And you can decorate them with a little bit of fresh cilantro if you want, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish these up and then I will come back and show you guys how they turned out and we will try them and see how they taste. So I'll be back in just a minute. Okay, you guys, so these are all done and they are looking pretty good. I don't think they browned really all that well, but I I think you should probably egg wash over the top of them too, but it didn't tell you to do that. So I'm not sure. All right, so now you're gonna go ahead and drizzle both of your aioli sauces over top of them, or you can um, leave the one for dipping if you want and just drizzle one, or you can just not drizzle anything over them and leave them both, you know, let it be the person who's eating it decision on whether or not they want that on there. This one is definitely a little bit thicker, so a little bit harder to drizzle. Okay, but there we go. So now you've got some with the turmeric and stuff on there. Um, the turmeric aioli and the, I forgot the name of the other one. Um, but yeah, um, I did try the actual sauce or the um, chorizo sauce that's inside of these and it's actually pretty good. It does have a little bit of spiciness, but it's kind of like when you're first eating it, you really don't taste it. But then when you swallow, you might get a, like a little kick of spice there. Um, it's not too bad. And both of these aren't too bad as, as well. I am not gonna try these all together just because we only have so many and I am not not feeling for spicy today, you guys. Okay, so, uh, but they, but all this stuff separately tastes really good. So I'm pretty sure combined together, it'll be pretty awesome, okay? All right, you guys, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. Like and subscribe if you like, or don't if you don't. Um, everyone have a good day. Oh, and I did forget, I almost said, everyone have a good day and then moved on and I forgot to tell you. So this is actually um, from the Festival of Arts. Um, the Epcot International Festival of Arts. And you uh, could have found this was introduced in 2021 at the Vibrant and Vivido Encanto Cocina Food Studio, okay? And that's in Epcot during the Arts Festival, the Festival of Arts, International Festival of Arts, which I, I don't think they're available any other time. And I don't know if they've been available every year since 2021. So that would have to be something you have to look into. All right, you guys, so that's it. Everybody have a good day, and we'll see you later. Bye.